At the Thought Collective, we love thinking up of new ways to help our communities become braver and kinder. So I had this really strange idea one day where what if we got a group of random strangers to have dinner together, put aside their weapons and talk about stuff that normally people fight over. This is a segment from our Regardless of Religion dinner where we talk about this question. Jolene, I'm actually interested. You call yourself like a non-religious person, right? Are there any assumptions that religious people make of non-religious people that drive you absolutely bonkers <laughs> and you want them to stop? I'm sure there are many. Oh. I guess I don't feel that I encounter it very often, but there are there is definitely tendency for some people to get very caught up in this kind of metaphysical argument. They will say things like, oh, but if you don't believe in God and absolute truth, then how can you have any ethical positions at all? Back in the day of 2009, when there was this whole AWARE takeover, uh -huh. and then I was involved in blogging about it. I didn't work for AWARE back then, although I do now. I was involved in blogging about it, and I saw this argument come up quite a few times, including people saying, there's just no point having this conversation with you because you don't believe in absolute truth. And it was really weird to me. It's like as if if you don't have the, the metaphysics, then you will have no thoughts about what is a better or worse way to behave to other people. I don't encounter this so often, but sometimes I do see this. And I find that kind of a little bit scary, I guess, because these are basically people who are saying if we can't agree on metaphysics, then we can't talk about anything else. But in the meantime, in actual physical space, we're all sharing the same society, right? So we have to learn to talk about things and we're never going to resolve the metaphysics by... I mean, it's just not going to happen, right? So why not talk about the ethics separately? Yeah. I have the other way, the experience mm. of the other way. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, know, my, yeah. my friends, yeah, <laughs> who, who are non-religious uh -huh. and she has a PhD in, in, in biology or mm. microbiology. Mm. Uh -huh. Then when she found out that I believe in God, then she looked at me as if I'm, I'm from Mars, you know. Mm. <laughs> like, she says something along the line of, uh, but today we have people like Richard Dawkins been writing books, you know, you, you mean you didn't read them, you know, mm. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I encountered yeah, like, this a lot okay. also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps we need also to, to realise that people of faith sometimes are quite genuine also mm. to want to go through their life being informed or guided by their faith mm. and we, we, we cannot deny that. Mm. And people have difficulty especially adjusting in, in our kind of society, very pluralistic mm. and, and very diverse. And here they are informed by their religious tradition for so long and how do they confront these differences? And therefore, I think it's also useful to assure people that people can believe whatever they want to believe as long as they do not encroach into the rights of the others or impose it on others or coerce others to subscribe to what they believe in. But when it comes to the common social space, can we, for example, talk in terms of our common citizenry? The moment we talk about our law in a nation state, for, for example, and then we cannot bring our theological opinions too much into it, but we have to argue based on, on public reason. If you want to come for our public DMZ dinners, click here to find out how. <laughs>